I'd like to show you how to neutralize the bad effects from caffeine. Now, I'm going to go through the positives of consuming caffeine, and I'm talking mainly about coffee and tea, not sodas, and also some of the cons, some of the negatives, okay? And there are negatives. And I will say that uh, coffee is very, very addicting. And uh, I'll be the first to admit that I am addicted to coffee, and I am not going to give it up. Now, I can still control the amount of coffee I drink. I just have two shots of espresso every morning, okay, with a little cream and one packet of xylitol. I don't do any more than that. And even though there are some negative things, I'm going to show you what to do to get rid of those negative things. But there is also some positive things too, if you don't consume too much. Now, there's some very interesting things about the caffeine in coffee, okay? Uh, people think that it gives them energy, right? Well, there's no energy in coffee that you're going to get when you drink it. It basically manipulates certain chemicals that are already in your body. And one of the chemicals that caffeine affects is adenosine. That's a certain chemical in the body that does a lot of different things. Um, it's part of the um, ATP, the energy source of your body, adenosine triphosphate. It also makes up your DNA, but it has another function of helping you sleep. And so this chemical compound, caffeine, mimics or looks very, very close to adenosine. And so what happens is caffeine acts like a key and goes into the receptors for adenosine, okay? And it locks it up, it blocks it. So if someone sticks some key that doesn't quite fit into a lock and then it's jammed, you can't open that door. So now adenosine doesn't really work to a certain degree. And so now you don't get as sleepy. Okay, so that's one effect of caffeine. It gets rid of this compound that makes you sleepy. But for me, when I drink coffee, I become very creative. I have better cognitive skills, um, sharper, I have better ideas, things like that. And that is because caffeine stimulates another compound called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is necessary uh, for the central nervous system, for different things in the brain, and it's considered a neurotransmitter because it helps messages travel through the brain. And so it's related to feeling awake, um, helping with your attention, memory, learning, um, cognitive function. And then the third thing that caffeine does is it increases noradrenaline. That is the neurotransmitter that is triggered when you're awake. And so serotonin and melatonin helps you with sleep, but noradrenaline keeps you awake and caffeine simulates noradrenaline. And noradrenaline is also involved in keeping you focused as well as learning and has some very similar things to acetylcholine. So that's what caffeine does. Okay, now let's first talk about the, the good things about caffeine, what it can do for you. Number one, it can help lower the risk of dementia. Okay, that's pretty cool. It can help you with gallstones. It can help you with the fatty liver. It can help you decrease fibrosis within the liver. It can even help lower liver enzymes. Adding fat to your coffee in the morning can help you fast for a longer period of time, which can help you get into the keto adapted state. And of course, drinking coffee can help you with these temporary uh, cognitive benefits, right? Because for me, it probably lasts several hours and then it's like, it's over. But of course, in the past, in college, I would keep drinking coffee through the entire day. I mean, I would drink pots and pots of coffee. And that was a very bad thing. But at first I could handle it, but then I couldn't handle it. Now, the cons or the negatives of caffeine, okay, are this. It can increase blood pressure. It can increase cholesterol. It has a potential to um, cause insomnia. It can increase cortisol. It can also increase adrenaline, you know, and maybe a little bit is okay, but if you overdo it, that can kind of affect your adrenals. It can give you uh, anxiety. It can give you depression as a side effect. It can actually make you tired. It can cause arrhythmias. It can give you a headache. It can give you a panic attack. It can cause mood swings. It can give you neck tension, okay? Jaw tightness, as well as grinding your teeth at night. It can also cause a B1 deficiency, which can cause more nervous tension or stress. And it can also act as a diuretic, okay? And you can lose electrolytes as well. Now, a lot of these negative effects occur more with people who have 
kind of a genetic variation with the detoxification of caffeine. Now, if you're watching this and you have a problem with um, drinking too much coffee or just being exposed to too much caffeine, you already know you have a problem with it, okay? And so this video can help you. But that being said, if you don't have a problem with coffee, I'm going to give you some things to do to kind of help detoxify this caffeine from your liver more thoroughly. But if you have a, a genetic variant to this enzyme that is supposed to help you detoxify caffeine, this could lower your ability to get rid of caffeine by 40x, okay? And so caffeine just stays in your body longer and creates more damage. But not only caffeine, estrogen, smoking, drugs, medications. So in general, these toxins stay in your body longer. So again, what I'm going to tell you will not only help you clear out uh, the caffeine, but will also help you clear out some of these other poisons as well. So the first tip I'm going to give you is just to lessen your exposure to caffeine, okay, and coffee and whatever else caffeine is in, like tea, chocolate, things like that. And of course, soft drinks is a given. So that's one thing I did. I just have one cup, which two shots of espresso in the morning, that's it. I don't consume any more than that. And that can actually help you. And also the obvious thing is to minimize the exposure to, like I said, the drugs, the estrogen, the chemicals, et cetera. Number two, exercise. That can greatly help you as well. The more heavy exercise you do, the more you can get rid of these toxins. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, and if you guess cruciferous, you are correct. Like broccoli, broccoli sprouts, um, cauliflower, um, radish, arugula. Now, two of the foods that will also help someone detoxify caffeine is celery and parsley. So if you include that in your diet, that would be a very good thing. And the last thing that is just the super powerhouse of detoxification is curcumin, and that would be in turmeric. So if you're suffering from the negative things from coffee or caffeine, uh, I just gave you several things to do to help minimize the damage. Now, since we're on the topic of coffee, if you have not seen my video on Bulletproof Coffee, that's been a very popular one. I put it up right here. Check it out. you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before